Hello, and welcome back to the county of Longsword. First, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you, um, I missed one National Spirit uh, that I didn't read in the last episode. The final push, which you get from the last focus for, for Glory. Um, this it has been a painful conflict for all involved, but the final battle lines and plans have been drawn, and the troops have been rallied for the final assault. One last push is all it'll take to bring this terrible civil war to a lasting peace. Forward! So yeah, that's that's the only thing you missed from there. I just wanted to say that so I knew like, I actually read everything. <clears throat> now before we get into this and, and moving down our focus tree, I thought I'd read uh, Helk Will to you. Since it's so close by, it's our neighbor, and I didn't read it. For this series, even though we owned it, for this exact reason. Sitting on the northern bank of the Griff King River, Helquil is a city between two roads, and and one which is described in vastly different terms, depending on which you belong to. The Griffonian Empire in the west, Helquil is a valiant bulwark of the Griffins, home to those knights who have sworn themselves to protect their brethren against the pony threats. Those in the Riverlands, be them dime dogs or ponies, Helquil is the city of butchers and raiders, sitting on stolen ground and built with stolen goods. Well, its story began with the great eastward expansion of Grover II. The great emperor conquered what came to be known as the Griffonian frontier and tasked the order of the brothers of the Griffin House to prelate Alicius and Cloudbury with guarding it. When the Emperor died against a simple Nimbusian soldier, with his successor cared little for his father's crusade, the Knights of Helquil settled down and began to build a series of military cities, towns, and villages surrounding impressive cattle, castles, and fortresses, Helquil being the mightiest of them all. The greatest landmark of the city is the Order's Castle, which stands on a hill overlooking the city and dominates the banks of the Griff King River. East of the cas castle stands the river port, to which trade flows and where the Order sur surveils any trader attempting the journey between the Empire and the Riverlands. West of the castle is the Pony Ghetto. The walled neighborhood is known for its poverty and squalor, caused by decades of discrimination and lack of investment from the Order. The city of Helquil in itself stands north of the Riverside districts. Its streets are one of the finest display of early government Go Groverian architecture, and has seemed to maintain an atmosphere of tradition, despite the march of industry. The only concession to modernity is the asphalt on the major streets, allowing for easy movement of troops and military vehicles, and allowing easy asset, asset, access to the three great temples dedicated to Boros, Eri, and Arcturus as well as Helquil's Imperial Railway Station, which remains to this day an unfinished mess, unconnected to the Empire. The city is governed in a strange fashion, with the knights delegating the municipal powers to the guilds of crafters and merchants, and the local prelates. How interesting is that? <coughs> and now... We will continue on to the future of our nation. Your eternal reward. The country lay in ruins. Cities were raised. Villages and forests were burned. Farmlands were despoiled. And the triumphant count spared none in his quest to purify Longjord. Even the victorious reformistine were starting to have second thoughts about this plan. <clears throat> but they were kept in check by their zealous superiors. Longsword was purified at a heavy cost. The hastily erected fortifications of Z Zeltstadt were no match for the reformist in onslaught as they broke through and mercilessly slaughtered the loyalist soldiers. Conrad Silvertalon was found in his room, lying dead at the command table, pistol in his claws. The surviving commanders were quickly executed. Visagirna's forests were burning as the reformistine were driven, driving out the ponies by any means necessary. For all their efforts, Starry Knight and most of the partisans were able to flee across the border in the Light City, their escape covered by ponies and griffins who sacrificed themselves to enable it. 
In the end, it could be reasonably said, not a single pony was left a longsword. After all these years, setbacks and outright revolts, Count Pallas Descalin considered his dreams fulfilled. Sure, he had to destroy most of the country to accomplish that, but did that matter once Von Kattenberg learned of his success? Surely he'd get richly rewarded, maybe even gain a higher title. Now all that's left is Rosa Holdenreich to send a letter to Hellquill, reporting on their success. On the other hand, Claw, Rosa herself is feeling disillusioned by this outcome. The reform seen cause is self-destructive. They have no future. Perhaps she can still make a final decision in the Civil War. We replace the longsorting in the Civil War with anarchy. We remove some people. We lose our friends. The uniform is rather nice. But the reform scene days are over. And yeah, we literally can't go that path. Because, um, because they don't exist, huh? I think, yeah, I think they still need to be under that league for us even to be able to, uh, not go with Rosa's path. Well, though, this is the path I was gonna go anyways, but I was gonna look at what happens when you let yourself get annexed. Because I believe that's what happens. 